Hi, it's Laura at Aquamarine 18 Tarot and Books. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Welcome or welcome back. I am here with a VR to a tag, and that tag is Tarot Through Movie Genres. This is a tag that was started by Quinn over at Lucid Moons. Quinn has a great channel. If you haven't checked their channel out yet, you should, and I will link the original video for this tag that they created in the description box below. The idea of this tag is to pick a deck or two or three to go with a number of different movie genres. There are 13 different prompts. So I really enjoyed watching Quinn's video. I can definitely say that I might watch fewer films than Quinn does. I will definitely share some favorite films or some more recent films that I've seen in the genres as I as I can. I have been very consciously trying to reduce screen time, especially, you know, in the past number of years where I, like many people I know, have been spending much more time online with remote work and things like that. So I'm actually not as up on kind of contemporary films as I, as I could be, but I do enjoy films. I enjoy television as well. So there's definitely some television that's going to be happening in this tag as well. And while the tag is tarot through movie genres, I have totally included Oracle decks as well. I will timestamp below the prompts, but I will not put a spoiler list of decks. I will just share the prompts below so you can jump ahead to your favorite genre if you would like to skip the rest. So the first genre is perhaps my favorite one on the list, and that is science fiction a deck that incorporates imaginative, speculative, and or futuristic concepts. And I love science fiction. The deck that I chose for this is the Stars of Umber Tarot by F.F. Songana. I wanted to choose one that I haven't seen featured for this prompt yet. I do have the Tarot of the Cat People, which is definitely a science fictional deck. I have the Star Trek tarot and Star Trek um, animated series tarot, which are science fiction. Uh, but this one I haven't seen yet, so I thought that I would choose it. This was a Kickstarter. I'm not sure the availability status of this at this point, but it is a science fictional deck featuring all folks of color. And I really like it. It's kind of pip-ish. Um, it's a pretty pip-ish deck. And yeah, it's one that I really like working with. So in terms of science fiction films, I mean, obviously folks who watch my channel probably know <laughs> that I am a serious trekker. And so obviously, you know, films like The Wrath of Khan um, and perhaps controversially the, the um, motion picture as well are, are films that I like. Um, I have taught the film Arrival when I was teaching um, university, which is based on a novella by Ted Chang. Ted Chang is a wonderful science fiction author. If you like short fiction specifically, check out his work. I read a lot of science fiction. Um, other films, I mean, Alien, Blade Runner, The Thing, for television, Star Trek, Stargate, Battlestar Galactica, the more recent one. <laughs> Um, I'm currently watching Babylon 5, which somehow I didn't watch when it was on. It started at a time, I think, when I would have been a little bit too young to maybe grapple with some of the concepts in that show. But I, I love, love, love science fiction. Uh, for books, I mean, Octavia Butler's Lilith's Brood trilogy, Ursula Le Guin's uh, Left Hand of Darkness or um, The Dispossessed are some classics. Samuel Delaney's Nova. Um, and there are so, so, so many contemporary science fiction novels and novellas and short stories that are just fantastic. I probably read more sci-fi than anything else most of the time. So that is Stars of Umber Tarot by F.F. Songana for my science fiction deck. Next up is horror, a deck that scares, frightens, or disturbs you. And I 
do like a good horror film. I, I mostly prefer older horror films. I'm not one for gore and slasher stuff so much, but, you know, Jaws. Aliens, I know it's sci-fi, but Aliens I think of as more of a horror film. Uh, going really old, like Vincent Price, kind of old horror I can, I can have fun with. But I do not have a deck in my collection. <laughs> that scares, frightens, or disturbs me. I don't. I don't have a horror deck. I don't know that this has happened to me very much where I've done a tag and not had anything to show. I don't even have anything thematic that I can put here. I don't have like a vampire deck. I don't have a zombie tarot. I, like nothing. Absolutely nothing. So Quinn, I don't know if your intention was, was to identify niches in our collections where we might want to go deck shopping, but, but there it is. That might have just happened. So I will say that if a deck really frightened or disturbed me, like that might be a reason that I wouldn't add it to my collection. I can definitely see having a horror themed deck in my collection in some way. Tell me your favorites. Enable my shopping. Um, but yeah, if something I found really disturbing, I probably wouldn't want to work with it. So just as an example, so that I have something to put here, I can put it right here as a picture. A deck that feels kind of like a horror deck to me that I, I will not have in my collection on that basis is the Somnia Tarot. I appreciate the artistic skill that, you know, went into this. Just the white sheets, I, I, I cannot, I cannot. I do find this deck quite creepy for, for numerous reasons. So that to me is a horror deck, but I don't have it to show you. <laughs> The third prompt is romance, a deck that focuses on relationships or romantic love between people with an overall emotionally satisfying or optimistic tone. When it comes to reading and watching films and watching television, romance doesn't tend to be my thing. <laughs> uh, you know, often I find, especially in the kind of science fiction and fantasy that I read, the romance feels thrown in and is like the least compelling part of the plot, which is not to say that I, you know, I can't appreciate romance with humans in, in real life, but romance is not a genre that I'm into. Uh, for a book, I think This Is How You Lose the Time War is, is a brilliant and beautiful science fictional romance of sorts. I can't even think of a romance film that I'm super into. If I did, it would be a queer one, obviously. For a deck, I chose the Threadbound Oracle by Cedar MacLeod. This deck is a storytelling and kind of library themed deck, but it definitely, I think, satisfies the prompt of focusing on relationships or romantic love in that this deck is associated with Cedar's book series that starts with The Thread That Binds. The second book is The Tale That Twines, which I haven't read yet, but is sitting on my e-reader ready to go. And this is definitely a book series with an emotionally satisfying and optimistic tone. It's quite lighthearted compared to most of what I would go for. And there are romance plot lines in the book. There are romantic partnerships in the book that are, that are central to the plot. And I think a lot of the themes in this deck have to do with, you know, how we engage in relationships, right? Communication. There's a rainbow. Uh, a teacher relationship. So I do feel like there are a lot of kind of relationship themes in this deck. And part of that is because of the book. It's kind of beautiful beautiful um, relationships of all different kinds of configurations in, in this book and in this deck. Friendships, uh, partnerships, marriages, and, and so on. So, so that, is my, that is my romance deck. I don't have a deck that's specifically kind of love or romance themed, but that's the one that comes closest, which is the Threadbound Oracle. Of course, like, <laughs> for a prompt about romance, I find the, the deck that is book themed. Okay, that says something. The fourth prompt is 
Thriller, a deck that delivers tension, surprise, and or a sense of impending doom and keeps you at the edge of your seat. So this is going to be probably an unexpected pick that people might think is a little bit weird, uh, but just, you know, bear with me because there is a rationale to this. I have chosen um, the Tarot de Paysage Interior, the Tarot of um, like Inner Landscapes. So this deck is not, you know, perhaps in an overt way, the most surprising. But for me, a thriller, a lot of what makes a thriller effective and makes suspense effective is the setting. And so I think about a film like No Country for Old Men, for example, which I quite liked. A film like that has a lot of tension and definitely very effectively does um, impending doom, edge of your seat. I went to see No Country for Old Men on a, on a date <laughs> and I ended up with like fingernail dents in my arm because date was not super into it. I also was not the one who chose it, so it happens. Uh, I really like the film though. This deck feels ominous to me in a way. Not horror, not scary, but definitely ominous. And there's something about the kind of heaviness of the clouds in a lot of these landscapes. And the kind of ambiguity of the imagery and the figures that to me feels suspenseful. And so it's not the most kind of action packed take on what a thriller can be necessarily. But for me, for me, impending doom, foreboding in a film or in television, to me, a lot of that is about the setting and the environment. And so this deck, Le Tarot de Paysage Interior, does that, um, I think, really effectively. So that's why it comes to mind for a thriller, though it may not be the most obvious. The fifth prompt is mystery, a deck that is mysterious, suspenseful, and doesn't reveal answers right away. Reading this deck may feel like solving a puzzle. Okay, I like a good mystery. I don't know that I have any mystery films to say that I love, but for a deck I chose the Tildwick Tarot because this definitely feels like a puzzle to me. Folks will be familiar with this deck, I'm sure. This is another very um, setting-based deck. It's, it's almost all interior settings. There is a need with this deck to look very closely. It feels full of little clues, like little hints of things that you could easily miss if you weren't looking. I could imagine like some kind of whodunit set in this house. And it feels mysterious for sure. So I'm trying to think of a mystery film. <laughs> the Usual Suspects, does that count? Because it has a big twist. I, I like The Usual Suspects. So, the Tildwick Tarot. The Tildwick Tarot is my mystery deck because it feels like a very mysterious space to occupy. The next prompt, number six, is action. A deck that features loud, wild, and spectacular imagery that may be overwhelming, but you love it anyways. Okay, so when it comes to, when it comes to film, I will say that action content is not my, my favorite. I love a sci-fi, I love a fantasy, and when it's too much action scenes, too much, you know, lasers and 
sword fights and things like this, I can tend to get a bit bored. <laughs> Give me slow, plodding along character development any day <laughs> over action. The new Star Trek films are too action heavy in my opinion, unpopular opinion. So for this I chose a deck that I think could have gone a number of different places in this tag. Um, and action is perhaps not the most obvious place to put it, but here I am putting it there anyway. That is the Terra of the Silicon Dawn. This definitely has science fictional uh, and fantastical aspects to it as well. But um, these aren't going to pick up. These are extra cards. Um, you can see here. There's a lot of action-packed scenes in this deck though. So the fools, there are some kind of superhero type fools. There are several fools in this deck. Here they all come because clearly I didn't shuffle very well. You know what, everything's out of order because I've been doing top tarot trumps. That's what happened there. Um, so yeah, like this, this feels like a cool action hero to me of sorts. There's definitely, as the prompt suggests, loud, wild, spectacular imagery. So, yeah, could have been sci-fi, could have been fantasy. Queer deck of my dreams, Terra of the Silicon Dawn, you know, definitely has some action packed content going on. So in terms of action films, I'm not, I'm not going to be a good source of action film favorites because I don't tend to find them particularly exciting. <laughs> I'm gonna sound really boring in terms of my film taste, I think. I feel like, I don't know, more things are being um, shared about me in an interesting way by virtue of these prompts. Okay, number seven is fantasy, another genre that I love. A deck that transports you to an imaginary world with magic, mystical creatures, or elements of the supernatural that don't exist in the quote unquote real world. I love a fantasy. I, I read more than I watch. For films, I mean, like Pan's Labyrinth was beautiful. Uh, Where the Wild Things Are, I really liked as a film uh, with prior attachment to the book, of course. And I've chosen Tarot Sirene, which is in a very shiny box. So, Tarot Sirene is fantastical because it is a mermaid deck. <laughs> Doesn't require a ton of explanation. It is, no, go over there. It is a pip deck. And I love this deck as a mermaid deck because I find that a lot of the mermaid decks that I've seen other than this one don't necessarily have the amount of body diversity or other kinds of diversity as well. Um, but body diversity was really important to me in a mermaid deck and this deck has that. So I do quite enjoy this as a summary fantastical read, uh, read, a uh, deck to read. Again, there are other things in my collection that could have fit here. Something like, um, the Terror of the Cat People has fantastical elements as well as sci-fi elements. Uh, but this just is such a fun deck. This might be out of print. I'm not sure. I've had this for quite a while. I love the colors. So that is my fantasy deck with mystical creatures included. Next prompt is comedy. A deck that is humorous, amusing, or induces laughter and or a sense of enjoyment. Um, so when it comes to film and television, I will say I am comedy picky. I can enjoy a comedy. I can also really not. Uh, I do have a bit of a hard time. Of course, you know, 
me and every other queer person, our flag means death has been really fun. Um, I've been watching what we do in the shadows. I'm not very far, but for a comedy, I'm in, I've been I've been enjoying that. I liked people just do nothing as a comedy. I am currently watching The Bear, which apparently the Emmys think is a comedy, but I disagree. Um, so I, I do like some comedy content. And for a deck that is humorous or induces laughter and a sense of enjoyment, I went for something that felt fairly obvious to me. I don't know that it's comedic, but it's certainly inducing enjoyment. And that is, of course, Into the Void, the Black Cat Tarot. I could have picked a couple of different cat decks for this. Who doesn't get a sense of enjoyment from this? And it's funny to me because I live with two cats and there's very much cat behavior <laughs> in all of the joy that it induces, induces represented in this deck. So this one is funny to me. I saw this deck on B of I, Kelly Sunflower channel and it was a very impulsive um, purchase and I've had so much fun with it. It, you know, just, just the faces that these cats make, make me laugh. The antics that these cats get up to make me laugh. The collars that these cats wear make me laugh. Like, <laughs> I, I think this deck is really fun and really funny. So that's, that's my comedy deck. Into the Void, the Black Cat Tarot. Next up is drama, as I put away some decks here because I'm totally making a mess. Drama is a deck that focuses on conflict in characters' lives that takes a more serious tone. Drama. So for drama, I chose the Darkness of Light Tarot because, you know, what I tried to do with this prompt is pick a deck that feels dramatic to me in terms of the artwork. So this deck definitely feels dramatic. The color scheme feels dramatic. The lighting feels dramatic. A lot of the people are very kind of pensive and moody looking. You know, there's, there's something very much dramatic about these images. I think this deck is beautiful. I have no idea if this one is still available. I know he he changed some of the details of this deck. There have been a few different versions with different um, colors of borders or fonts and things like that. But you know, this deck is very definitely drama. Like, what kind of drama is he dealing with? He's dealing with something. And it's giving him a headache. Drama. So, the Darkness of Light Tarot is my drama deck. Next up is Documentary, a deck that depicts real life people, animals, events, or situations that may be educational or informative. I love a good documentary. I love a good nature documentary in particular. So I chose the Tree Lore Oracle, an eco-printed oracle of Eastern North American trees by Dana O'Driscoll. For folks who don't know Dana, Dana is the Grand Arch Druid of the Ancient Order of Druids in America, of which I am a part. Um, she is also the creator of the Tarot of Trees and what I believe is called the Plant Spirit Oracle. I don't have that one. So the tree lore oracle is, is tree based. Each card has the name of the tree and this is eco printed. So these are actually made from, you know, the materials of the tree itself, you know, it's leaves or needles. So that one is definitely documentary, but I have to say the reason that I chose this deck as a documentary, a deck that may be educational 
or informative is actually not about the cards so much as it is about this. I don't think that this will fit in my um, screen, but, but this is huge, you know, for sake of comparison to a standard tarot card. You know, this is up there in the largest guidebooks that I own. And there's a bunch of notes in the back. And this includes so much information. It has information about divination meanings for the cards. It has information about the tree's ecology, where it lives, magical uses for it, human uses for it, recipes, uh, historical information about how these trees have been engaged with, you know, different kinds of um, safety considerations if there are any with the trees. You know, anything you can imagine in terms of information about the tree in question is in this book. This book is very good. I would say even if you have no interest in the, the deck at all, but are interested in trees and working with trees magically or medicinally or, or spiritually in any capacity, that this book as a standalone is very much worth, worth looking at. So that is my documentary. And I don't have favorite documentary films to mention here because I feel like documentaries of any genre are the film that I watch most impulsively. I don't tend to browse around on the subscription services that we have or the one subscription service we have at any given time because we sign up and cancel and don't pay for more than one. Uh, I don't tend to just browse and pick things at random so much, but documentaries I do. If it looks interesting and it's about something related to nature, I, I will watch it. So I've seen a fair amount of documentaries and I love, you know, watching David Attenborough and folks like this talk about animals, especially. Prom number 11 is an animated film, a deck with bright, expressive, or cartoon-like images that you probably would have enjoyed as a kid and still love as an adult. So I don't watch much, if any, animated programming as an adult, but as a kid, I was lucky enough to grow up at a time of a significant amount of kind of ecologically environmentalist inflected children's programming. So when I think of an animated film, you know, that I, that I grew up loving, I think of something like Fern Gully, even Secret of Nim, I, you know, watched the Smoggies as a kid, which I don't know. I don't know if that was a Canadian thing. I don't know how far reaching the Smoggies were, but definitely, you know, very overt environmentalist overtones. And I love that I got to experience that kind of programming as a young person. And I hope that it's still a thing. Um, I'm, I'm admittedly not up to date on animated or children's programming. I don't have kids, so um, I'm definitely out of date and back in the 80s for, for that. And I chose Tarot of the Magical Forest. And this is my Kelly Bear modified version of Tarot of the Magical Forest. And this just, you know, reminds me of the animal themed cartoons that I would be drawn to as a young person because if there was animals in it, I was probably into it. I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was a kid before I realized that a career in the sciences was not, <laughs> was not for me. <laughs> I, I loved animals growing up. I love animals now. And so, you know, for something animated and related to animals, the Terror of the Magical Forest felt like a really obvious choice. The next prompt is Western, a deck that embodies a spirit of freedom, exploration, and adventure. I cannot say that I particularly care for Westerns. I, I don't. I, it's, it's not a genre that I think of particularly positively, we'll just say that. The last film that I can think of having seen that would qualify as a Western was The Power of the Dog. I have lots of thoughts about that film that would exceed the reasonable time frame of a response to this tag. Uh, there's a, there's a lot I appreciated about about the power of the dog. I I would say. 
so in terms of a deck that I could associate with Western, freedom, exploration, and adventure, this was actually a really easy choice because it's the only thing in my collection that I think has anything to do with Western in any way, and that is Terror of the Crystal World by Brooke Penrose. I'm obsessed with this deck. <laughs> I like this deck substantially more than I like Western films. We, we can say that. This deck is not consistently Western, I wouldn't say, but there are definitely um, some, some cowboy hats in here somewhere. The De Death is wearing a cowboy hat. The Hierophant is also wearing a cowboy hat. So there are definitely Western themes in ways that I don't think any other deck, you know. When I think of Western, I do think of hats as a main feature. <laughs> so the fact that this deck has those means that it's a Western deck. Does it embody a spirit of freedom, exploration, and adventure? I would say so. I would say so. Even the, even the children have cowboy hats. Cowperson hats. I'm obsessed with this deck. I think it's brilliant. I love using it. If someone told me, you know, would you love to have a kind of Western themed deck in your tarot collection? I would say probably not instinctively in terms of something that I would use, but this is great. I love Tarot of the Crystal World. Cowboy hats and all, which in my mind makes it a Western. The last prompt is black and white film, your favorite black and white deck, or a vintage deck from another era. I chose both. Thea's Tarot. Now, Thea's Tarot is a black and white deck. It is also a deck that is, I suppose, one, one could say vintage in terms of a deck. Uh, my printing, uh, my copy, is one of the original uh, ones from the mid-1980s. I'm, I am hesitant as one who is of the 80s to call 80s vintage in some ways, but this is definitely a vintage tarot deck and it's definitely black and white, so, you know, in terms of the prompt, this checks both boxes. Do I have favorite black and white films? I'm not sure. I, I, I would say that a lot of the, like, the kinds of horror films I'm attracted to tend to be older. So maybe something there. I'm definitely not opposed to a black and white film. This deck is in order. So that's Thea's Tarot. And this deck does feel, you know, ancestral to me, which, which is special. So it's my black and white film. And that is the end of this tag. Thank you so much to Quinn for creating it. This was a lot of fun. And thank you for tagging me because I will say, you know, I don't know if I don't know if movie genres is a thing that I feel like I would have done without being tagged. I think I probably would have. Uh, I'm not I'm not the most of a movie buff though, so I was happy to get a nudge to participate and had a lot of fun picking decks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.